Greetings everyone and welcome to lesson number two in our Quality Assurance Made Easy series. I am Peter Okebukola. In lesson number one, you recall that we learned about the basic concepts in quality assurance. This lesson, this lesson number two, is on framework for quality assurance in higher education. Mind you, this, this lesson is exceedingly important. You would then say that when you come to lesson three, I will say, oh, mind you, lesson three is important. When we come to lesson four, we say lesson four is important. Now that reminds me of when I was an undergraduate at the University of Ibadan. Uh, then we didn't have the course unit system. We just had one exam at the end of session. So we'll start in, in September. We'll keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then by May, lectures will, will stop and then june that's when we have our exams so it was quite heavy 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 load on us you're trying to read everything in all the in all the uh, uh, subjects so what we try to do uh, that was in 1970 by the way what we try to do uh, is to now listen to the lecturer or professor and then find out what area is it placing accent and they will mark it here was Professor Oshaw. Professor Oshaw was uh, a microbiology teacher, professor. And uh, when he's finishing a, a, a lecture, as he was, uh, as it's about going out, he would then say, mind you, my dear students, that topic is very, very important. So, ah, uh, well, look, and they're right, very important. And it went on like that. Professor Oshaw, every lecture, he would say is very important. So, we write very important. So, when we were to revise in June for the exam, and we took our microbiology notes and tried to pick out the areas that uh, we can skip and those that we want to read deeper to prepare for exams. We find that everything is very, very important, very important. That, please listen. Every lesson <laughs> in this series is very, very important. Now, that's uh, on the lighter side. Now, talking about uh, framework, <laughs> you can see my dress. You know, I'm prepared for this lesson because I'm putting on a different framework. You know, framework in terms of <laughs> in terms of dress. Uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, today's by today, by the way, for me is uh, May the thirty first, Monday, May the thirty first, twenty twenty one, and tomorrow, June first, is a very unique day for our virtual institute for capacity building higher education. Why? Because that's the day we are formally inaugurating it, and it's going to be flagged off by the Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, and his secretary like no other. I call him Baba Mirashid. So uh, let's get down to business and let's get down to framework, quality assurance in higher education. So get down to business, we should, business of framework. So said today is May the 31st, last day of May. Thank God for keeping us from the 1st of May to the end of May. I'm looking forward to a wonderful month of June. Today, what are we going to learn? Now, we're going to describe the general framework for quality assurance in our education. And we're going to identify the different elements. Input elements, process, product elements. And the third thing is that we're going to state the importance of the framework in the conduct of quality assurance in higher education. By way of historical background to this framework, about 2005, uh, we had Okebukola, Shabani, Sambo, and Ramon Yusuf uh, work towards developing this framework. And by 2007, Global Conference on Higher Education on Quality Assurance, organized by the Global University Network for Innovation, because it was innovative. And you'll be able to find the framework reported in this book higher education in the world 2007 accreditation for quality assurance what is at stake so since 2007 when we published this framework we, it has evolved we added a few more elements and i'm very happy to let you know that 
is now globally used as a model for implementing quality assurance activities in education. Somebody is asking me, where do you get it? Just Google higher education in the world, and then you're going to find it. It's uh, Paul, Grave, Paul Grave Macmillan. I think it goes for about uh, 59 euros. So um, let's look at the progress of our linear curves. Now we're supposed to describe the general framework, general framework for quality assurance in higher education. Now the general framework takes on a systems approach. The system as an input, you have the process, and then you have the output, and you have the feedback. Now let us get a team, a group of uh, participants and some other experts. Let, let them tell us what are the inputs into, say, a university. What are the processes in a university? Now, what are the outputs? So I'm going to turn on to a group and then we're going to have their views on what the input elements are, the process elements, and the output elements. Have with us the co-developer of the framework. You know, the framework was developed by Okibu Kola, Shabani, Sambo, and Ramon Yusuf. So we're luck lucky to have Professor Shabani here. Professor Shabani, you want to say a word to the participants? Yes, I should like to say hello to everybody and welcome them to this uh, exercise. Welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I, uh, I'm asking our participants here to share with us what they consider to be the input variables into the higher education system, in this case, to their university. You know, we are looking at the general framework of the quality assurance uh, in higher education. So can I start with uh, Professor Akima Jumbadi? Thank you, everybody. My name is Akima Jumbadi. Um, from uh, Birmingham City University in the United Kingdom. Um, the input process in our university fundamentally uh, rests on the quality of talent that the university tend to outsource across the globe in order to be able to ensure the value addition that the university most desired for the most important people to us, in this case, our students. Again, one, another fundamental thing that, I mean, that we use as input is the in, uh, technological architecture that has been put in place, especially those that we have employed to take care of the pandemic by ensuring continuous education all through the pandemic, okay. investing in our e-learning environment, e-library, okay. among others. Thank you so very much. Maybe, Kulio uh, Joe, you want to take it from there. Inputs into the university. For higher education system. Right. Thank you very much. I am Claudia Joe from Nigeria. In addition to what Mr. Jobadi has said, I also want to look at the quality of lecturers that the university take in to teach the students as part of the input variables. I also want to look at learning resources, the library, the quality of equipment in our laboratories. I also want to look at the um, condition of working environment where the lecturers and teaching staff also make use of. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you. So let's go to the process. Uh, Mariam Pendo Abdulladi, can, can you uh, give us some elements of the process? Thank you very much, sir. I am Mariam Abdulhadi from Nigeria. The process in our university are the lecturers teaching the students right from their year one. That's they, they are taking them from the process of unknown to the known state, developing them, they learn from there. That's the process in our universities. Okay, so let's have another uh, wrap it up. Uh, Dr. Buguma, process. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Swadu Buguma from the University of Burundi. Talking about process, I think we should take in, in we should take the methods used by teachers to teach students. And we, took, we have to take also interaction between teachers and students. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have listened to uh, a subset of participants uh, tell us what the input variables are, what the process variables are. And of course, we know the outcome. So let's get back to class. So welcome back to class. Our participants and experts have uh, said it all, uh, given us 
uh, the elements in the import process and the, uh, well they didn't talk about output but let me give you a few more within our framework we have the inputs into the university or higher education institution to include the students the teachers the non-teaching staff in nigeria the teachers most of them belong to what we call the academic staff union of universities ASU. now for non-teaching staff you have the sanu you have the nasu there don't mind me if you are not from nigeria those are some unions that are, and also not so we have managers you have the curriculum as an input you have facilities as an input finance that's money no money no work uh, instructional materials and other resources these are the inputs into the system now what about the process the processes include teaching and learning processes the conduct of examinations conduct of research you know we're talking about the university where the three major functions are teaching research and community service or community engagement so research the what you know part of the process use of time and space the student services administration and management processes leadership community participation and the quality assurance as part of the process then in the output end you have the quality of graduates when the input is mixed together in the process the output will be quality of graduates production of new knowledge that's research responsible citizens economic and social development so how are we fared in uh, what progress have we made in uh, a march on this three legged race so here we have to identify the different elements in the input process and product components of the framework well and then let's go on a short break when we return we're going to get on to these different elements in the import process and product component. Yeah, so, so, welcome back. Now, we're going to identify the different elements. Now, we're going to begin with the input elements. You recall that we said input elements will include the students. So what about the students? Now, the socioeconomic status of the students is quite important. The ones that are poor, they have to struggle, they be hungry, they have all manner of issues. I may not even listen in class when they are hungry. The IQ, the reading culture, the age, the gender, the health status, and the learning style are part of the student uh, input. What about the teachers, the qualification, the teaching and research experience, the rank, the age, the gender, marital status, non teaching staff, about the same thing, managers, the experience of the head of the department, of the dean, of the vice chancellor or rector, the gender, the age, the curriculum as an input, the relevance of the curriculum, the adequacy of the curriculum, the facilities, adequacy, state of maintenance. What about money, finance, adequacy, and the way the money is managed? instructional materials adequacy relevance usage level of maintenance and the other resources adequacy and relevance dear participants these are the input elements and the details of each of the input elements can we go to the next yes i can see you want me to go to the next which we're looking at now are the process elements you see the process elements are the following teaching and learning processes there are teaching methods that are used in the institution the quality of classroom and laboratory interactions the conduct of examinations quality of exams examination supervision the quality of research research productivity and relevance of the research use of time and space student and staff workload timetabling uninterrupted academic calendar the student services quality of hostels quality of social activities of students the games uh, availability of uh, opportunity for games administration management processes quality of management at the unit level department level faculty level at the level of the registry of the bursary of works and services very important the community participation level of community participation in the activities of the university and the quality assurance level of implementation of the quality assurance policy 
of the institution. So we have done input, we have done process, we are moving on to the last, which we have as product. The product is graduate, of course, the quality of graduates. So the labor market assessment of the quality of graduates. Production of new knowledge, that is research. Assessment of the research output of staff and relevance to national, regional, and global development. We're looking at responsible citizens. We're looking at economic and social development. So these are the product elements. Well, coming up is objective number three. What's objective number three? Objective number three in our linear comes is just to state the importance of the framework in the conduct of quality assurance activities in higher education. I did mention at the opening that this lesson is extremely important, and I really mean it. I mean it because many of the things that we'll be doing on quality assurance, we hinge very much on this framework. Which framework? This one we're seeing on the screen that we'll be talking about uh, since the beginning of this lesson. Now, I've identified a few areas where you find the uh, this important. If you look at the development of a quality assurance policy, I've seen the quality assurance policies that have been that are in use by many of the institutions participating in this training program. And I'm quite impressed, but also not impressed because many of them, indeed all of them, did not cover all these elements. And if you don't cover all these elements, then you have a deficit in your quality assurance policy. What that means is that your quality assurance policy must indicate how the student, the, the, uh, student variable here will be quality assured, how the teacher variable will be quality assured, not teaching staff, managers, curriculum, facilities. So everything here must be reflected in the quality assurance policy. Did I have somebody say that uh, the, 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 their policies uh, uh, reflect all of this? I said no, because I, I checked through all of them. So that's one part of the, that, that's an element, that's a delivery a dividend of this training. Because we are not going to rework your quality assurance policies and be able to tell your vice chancellor, and if you are vice chancellor, be able to tell your senate that look, we have some deficiencies in our quality assurance policy, and uh, based on this training, we are able to upgrade. When you're conducting program and student accreditation by Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, by the Burundi Council for National uh, National uh, the CNES, that's uh, like the equivalent of NUC. And in NUC, the regulatory agencies, you have to use this framework. Any institutional accreditation that does not take into consideration all of these elements is deficient. Because you've got to look at each of these when you are doing your accreditation and draw minimum standards for them and match what you are seeing with the minimum standards. And they come to a decision whether the program or the institution has met the minimum standards. And also visitation. Visitation, as I said, visitation panels are uh, around all our federal institutions. And uh, the terms of reference uh, of the panels relate largely uh, with, with this. So that's another importance of this framework. And then the last bit is you can use this framework to predict the quality of graduates from your university. This is another dividend of this training. I'm going to give you a software where we plug in all this, all this data. You collect data from your institution over, let's say, five-year period and be able to predict what kind of quality graduates, what kind of the quality of the graduates that you'll be producing. This framework Ladies and gentlemen, is <laughs> like Professor Shaw, very, very important. So what I would learn in this lesson, we describe the general framework for quality assurance. We also identify different elements and then we state the importance of the framework, the conduct of quality assurance activities. Of course, which is more important? Well, there's going to be a debate. Which is more important? The input variables, this one? Or the process variables in determining the quality of graduates. We know that the quality of students is very important in determining the quality of the output. Quality of teachers, very deep. Now, processes, the way the, 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 the teaching learning activities in the in the university or in the higher education institution, or the conduct of exams, or the conduct of research, you know. So which is more important? That is the debate that's going to happen 
on Saturday, the let me see now. That's Saturday. Let's see. Let's see. That's Saturday, the fifth of June. So the debate is going to happen between the NUC staff. We are having different levels of debate. The NUC people are going to have their debate on Saturday, and then the other groups, the Ghana uh, G Tech, uh, the Burundi group, uh, we also uh, the Vice Chancellors will also have debates for you. Because at the end of it, we're going to see who will win the Rashid Quality Assurance Trophy. Hey, I can see that uh, our Ghanaian colleagues are saying, oh yeah, they're going to beat the Nigerian colleagues. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's going to happen. So, and the Burundi people are squaring up for the Nigerians. We're going to have a very healthy uh, debate. Now, the debate for the next one is going to be a different topic. But for this, these are the names of uh, the representatives of uh, the directorates in NUC. Uh, by Tuesday, we'll be able to assign them to pros and cons. But just before I go, just before I go, the math teacher wrote 2y plus 5, 2y plus 5 is equal, equals 18. Say, find y. Hey, this smart boy said, sir, that is letter y on the board. Letter y on the board. Where else should, should we find it other than on the board? Oh, oh, smart boy. So, y is on the board. So, find another y. And that is what is the expansion of C H E A C I Q G? Ah, oh, you don't know that one. That is another story for the next lesson. Bye bye. <music>